And before we get into the Fibonacci retracement tool, let's define what the Fibonacci retracement tool actually measures. So in the market, when we have a trend, we have an impulsive wave and a retracement within every trend. So when the market is going in, in this scenario upwards, we have this uptrend. Within this uptrend, you will find impulsive waves and retracements or pullbacks. Now under Elliott wave theory, the impulsive wave is always also called a motive phase and the retracement can be called a corrective phase under that theory. So the impulsive wave is the strong move in the same direction as the overall trend. The retracement is the weaker move or the correction that is counter to the overall trend. The impulsive wave will generally be much larger and much more forceful than the retracement itself. It will usually have larger candles, fewer candles, versus the retracement, which may have many smaller candles as price finds uh, a lot of res resistance to the pullback because this is the way that the stream is flowing, the river is flowing, and the retracement is basically swimming against the current. Uh, so that's what the parts of the market that the Fibonacci retracement tool measures. So for the tool itself, it is simply a measurement tool, not an indicator. Indicators perform calculations. The Fibonacci retracement tool is a manual measurement tool. The levels in black, as you see on this tool, are the official Fibonacci levels. The levels in red are non-official levels. So starting at the bottom, 100%, this is always the point A. It would start at point A and at 0% is the point B. Looking here, 88.6%, we have a deep retracement level, 78%. 0.6% is a fairly deep retracement level and is also a key level of support or resistance. 61.8 level is a factor of the golden ratio and is also a key level of support or resistance. 38.2% is a minor level of support or resistance and 23.6% is a uh, consolidation or continuation level. Now for the levels in red, 70.2% is just the 50% or halfway point of 61.8 and 78.6. So you want to take a lot of trades from this area, which I would consider the golden zone and 70.2% represents the halfway point of that zone. 50% not only being the halfway point between A and B or 100 and zero, it is also the halfway point between 38.2 and 61.8. And while this is not a standard Fibonacci level, it makes it into Fibonacci based charting software on nearly every charting platform. So you will always see that level. Now, the 11.8 level is the halfway point between 0 and 23.6 and it's something that I personally use as one of my take profit levels. So applying this tool, I mentioned that the 100% is always at the point A. So when you have presented with an uptrend impulsive wave you would start take the tool start at point a and drag up to point b where you would make sure that the zero is lined up with and we're looking to measure the depth of the retracement it's to see if it comes to an area of value point c and point c is optimally where we want to take our trades at an area of value a discounted price and ride the rally back up or ride the drop back down if we were selling where this does not work is in ranging market. With a trending market, we can tell just by looking at it which side the market, which side the market has strength. The impulsive wave this signifies that the market has strength to the upside because the impulsive waves are going up. You have a range. I'll delete some of these real quick. Within a ranging market, we're more than likely to have price moving between two fixed levels of support and resistance. And in this case, it is not practical to tell which side has strength because the market clearly has no direction. The impulsive wave will look very similar to the retracement wave and they're indistinguishable. You want to wait until the market has 
shown its hand and chosen a direction and then trade the pullback or retracement from the impulsive waves created once the direction has been decided. A consolidation or ranging market does not have a direction to trade from, so that's where Fibonacci does not work. Why does Fibonacci work when it does in a trending market? Now, in a trending market, Fibonacci works for a couple of reasons. One, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So many traders are watching these levels, particularly the 50, 61.8, 78.6 levels, and even the 38.2 levels. Some traders trade the shallow retracement. But so many traders are watching these levels that once they have an impulse wave identified, they're waiting for price to come back to one of these levels. And if they see price come to these levels and show confirmation that price is stopping at that level, then they would be willing to jump in on a trade. And because so many traders watch these levels, particularly the 61.8 level, lots of traders watch this. When price reaches this level, there are many traders interested in getting in at this kind of a discount. So with that kind of mass uh, group think behind that level, it fulfills its own prophecy. The other reason why we have this phenomenon of these pullbacks and waves is because market participants get experience they're humans they experience fear and greed which are two major forces in the market so when a trader gets in at this level they don't believe that the market will rally forever because the market will not move in a straight line like this indefinitely there has to be a correction because if every market moved in a total straight line price would rise infinitely it would never come back down there has to be a correction there has to be a phase where people take profit. And as with Forex, when someone buys to enter a position, they have to sell to close their position. So as people, as, a, as traders, get antsy about how, how long this trend can last, they start taking profits. They're taking profits here, taking profits here as well. And then they become sellers in the market, which adds selling pressure and then price comes back down. When price comes back down to this area of value, there are traders to, that miss this initial move that see they have a second chance to get in on an uptrend at a discount price. So they're watching because they were on the sidelines for this move right here. For this impulsive move, they were on the sidelines. Now they see that it went on sale, they get a better price, and they're willing to get in so they can catch the next move. So that's why this happens. And generally, the market moves in three drives and the corrective phases to correct the drives so when you see that just be aware that's why this works and where it does not work now the fibonacci retracement tool we know in general that we are placing this tool with the 100 percent at point a and the zero percent at point b so whatever you do you want to be consistent with it you, you don't want to choose wicks sometimes choose bodies sometimes or mix bodies with wicks if you're selecting wicks as your point A, you want to draw from the wicks, wick to wick. If you're selecting just the bodies, you want to draw from the body low in this case to the body high at this swing point. To not do that would result in something like this because a wick can be substantial, particularly at a swing point. If I went body to body, I might have this much wick below and this much wick above. So my fib would look something like this at 61.8 percent versus going wick to wick i'm getting the actual high and in this case pretty close but imagine if you mix the two if you're going body on one side and wick on another side now your fib is a lot different you're off and depending on the time frame this could be a lot of pips difference in price for your entries now generally Forex can be seen as not that precise, even though there is a lot of precision in Forex. You sometimes want to treat these areas not as a specific price level, but more as a zone. But precision does matter and consistency does matter. So it's my recommendation that when you back test placing this tool, you find which levels price reacts to most often with a successful result and use that area as an area of interest for yourself to trade from. Then you also want to make note of 
when you had these areas of interest that reacted positively, were you using wick to wick, wick to body, or body to body? And keep track of that to figure out which recipe produces the best results.